Can you see that? I hope you can. MSN AdLab has a really neat set of tools, and it's called the uh, it's called the like search form. Have any of you used this tool? This tool is really good if they have enough data to get data back. Um, the problem with the tool is that you don't have a lot of data in the machine yet. But I was doing some research for uh, for schools, Ivy League schools, and when I typed in Princeton, it was this tool shows you what other terms people type in after they type in Princeton. So it gives you an idea of how many people search for Harvard, Yale, Princeton Review, Stanford, etc. after they search for the word Princeton. What's very interesting is that there's a percentage of people that typed in Princeton monitors. And me being the curious guy that I am, I said, well, why would somebody do that? And what it goes to show you is that whole idea of how people change their search queries. It's why ranking anything after like 20 or 30 is basically a waste. At some point, people just change their search. So if someone types in Princeton, and they look at all these things that come back about Yale, Harvard, whatever, and all these things about the Princeton Review, they're saying, that's not what I was really looking for. I was really looking for information on the Princeton Monitor. They're going to change their search query. And it looks like you guys kind of down with it. So I'm going to run that again. The problem with free tools, they sometimes time out. Then I also took a look at the word Best Buy in my next example down here. And this shows what do people search for before they typed in the word Best Buy. So what you're seeing here are keywords that people used and whether they searched for it before or after. This tool is located at MSN or it's at adlabs.msn.com. It's free. So let's take a look at a more generic term like replacement windows. If you notice, when you have the bars at the top and it flows down into one term, what it's saying is what did people search for before they typed in the word replacement windows? And here you go. Windows, Home Depot, Lowe's, Hello Windows, Anderson Windows. It's giving an idea of what else people are searching for. And then for digital camera, what you'll notice is that with digital camera, you see the plural, which is digital camera, which is interesting. But you notice that Best Buy, is a lot more ingrained in people's minds when it comes to buying a digital camera than Circuit City. So if you're going to target a turn that revolves around coupons, for instance, maybe Best Buy is the way to go. Let's see if we can go back here. Magazines.com, we got it today. Here we go. So let's look at what we have here. To break this down, this tool gives you an idea of the audience, whether it's male or female, and the average age. But it also gives you the type of magazines people that go to this site might view. And it's not just because this is magazines.com. If you went to bmw.com, they would say, hey, well, people that go to bmw.com are likely to subscribe to Car and Drive or Running Track, whatever. Then it tells you what websites they visit that are associated with television stations. And magazines and celebrities, well, who really cares about them? But then it also starts giving you keywords. So if you're competing with magazine.com, you can see some of the magazines that it is that they may be trying to target here in rank well four. I, can, I would also recommend using SpyFu. Drop magazines.com into SpyFu and see what terms they're actually paying for and what the cost per click is. <coughs> and then it gives you an idea of similar audiences. So other sites they may or may not visit. Magazine Monster might be a, a competitor, for instance. Um, you know, professional subscription. So these are other sites that they may also be that are in a similar group. What's nice about the similar audience metric is that it gives you an idea of maybe some sites you might want to target from a link perspective because they're already kind of in that same family. What you probably hear a lot about Google is that all links, and I'll say Google, but it's interchangeable with any search engine. All links are not created equal. You want to stick out on your theme if you can. You know, a link from a random directory isn't nearly as great as a link from a directory that's in your topic. Here you are getting sites that have a high popularity that are showing a similar audience, if you can go after some of these guys for links, it might be a good start. So let's talk a little bit about keyword development. Sorry. Yes? Assuming you can afford, do you have an opinion on Hitwise? If you can afford Hitwise, I love it. It's it's grotesquely expensive. It's grotesquely expensive. Um, I prefer to start smaller and ramp up. So I use as many of these tools as I can. Then I'll bump up to Trellian's Competitive Intelligence Tool. Trellian, G-R-E-L-L-I-A-N. Because for those of you that are looking for more information on how your competitors are getting their traffic, 
Uh, Trailing is a great tool, and it's not as expensive as Hitwise. Any of you even talk to those guys at Hitwise? It's like, I'm going to pay you $20,000 for what? I only read this report once. Like, you're smoking crack. So, those guys, I never spent a dime on. Click tracks. Isn't that a web analytics tool? Um, this is what I think about all web analytics tools. If it gives you the information you need to make smart decisions, then it does its job. So, you look at like Omniture, I laugh at 90% of people that buy Omniture because they spend 25, 30 grand and it's like killing an ant with a sledgehammer. <laughs> it's like if you only need to, I mean, you see people take these huge installations of web analytics tools and all this pain to link all these crazy databases and the CEO goes around saying, we got 15 hits today. And you're like, you could have gotten that in Google Analytics. Why did you spend 30 grand for it? So, I think we all stay at developing our own keywords. Um, and it's not your fault. People bias their own, by your own search behavior. If you've ever said to yourself, I would never search that way after using the tool, then you should stop doing your own keyword research. Because you bias your own behavior. So if you are doing keyword research, you want to use tools to help you expand your horizons a bit. And those are some of the tools that we're going to go through right now. And when I say start wide, if you're private sec, you want to start with the word like heartburn. You don't want to use a word like heartburn medication to start because you're not going to find the words like heartburn drugs, you know, over the counter heartburn drugs or whatever. If your target is only for the word heartburn medication. So you want to start wide and let the tools help you narrow down the keywords you select instead of biasing the research by typing in exactly how you would search for something. So, you all have pads, hopefully you have pens close. I'm going to ask you uh, a couple of questions. If you were marketing this product here, and I said, okay, you're on the SEER team, which of course none of you thought it was me, um, and I said, okay, you have to give me the three keywords that you would want to target for a campaign if we were doing, offering this product. Write down for me what those three keywords would be. I don't think you need to look at it much longer, even though you're still writing. Same concept with this product. And what about if you were working in a marketing company, and you were working for a company right there that made a new medication to help people get a good night's sleep? What are the three keywords that you would say we have to target if you were working for that company? And then if you were looking to find an organization like mine, what would you target as your top three keywords? Okay. And it's something you should remember. Picking the wrong words, it can absolutely kill your career. Just ask this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, hoping that you pick the right keywords, let's start with the, with the first example, which I would have called a flat panel TV, because that's how I search, and I'm in the market for it. But I bet you not everybody here said one of their top three terms was flat panel TV. How many of you said flat panel? See, I'm not actually landing on your site and purchase from you. What were some of the other ones that you, that you used? Let's throw them out. Plasma TV. LCD, not LCD TV, just LCD, right? Flat screen. Now you all do realize that LCD is a totally different keyword than LCD TV, okay? Um, if I'm searching for LCD, this is something to think about when you think about keywords. Is if I search for LCD, is there a good chance I'm going to get a lot of things about LCD monitors? What if I'm looking for a TV? If I'm looking for a TV, I might start off searching for LCD, but then if enough things come back about 15 inch monitor, 20 inch monitor from my, 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 my computer, if I'm really looking for a 42 inch, I may start going LCD TV. And trust me, the closer I get to purchase, my keywords are going to be like 42 inch LCD TV, 42 inch LCD TV coupon. Uh, you know, it's those kind of things that I'm out there searching for. Now, of course, if you rank well for all the big terms, LCD TV or whatever, it's your job to then, since you invested so much time and effort to get you ranked well, make sure that I don't go back out to a search engine again and keep doing that research, because then you got best spot, Circuit City, everybody's saying, hey, buy your TV from us. If you can target the right words early enough, and try to develop tools to get people to come back to your site. You, it's a rank well for those kind of terms is ridiculously costly. So therefore, if you're going to make that investment, make sure that you actually uh, Make sure that you actually end up um, not letting them just go away so easily just by, uh, just by a click.